I've taken about 30 flights already this year, and every time I fly, I see it. Somebody plugs something into a power bank, they toss it into their backpack, zip it up, and put it in the overhead bin like it's no big deal. But here's the thing. It is a big deal. Because lithium-ion batteries are one of the top causes of in-flight fires right now. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. According to FAA data, there's already been 43 battery-related incidents on U.S. passenger aircraft this year, and 15 of those were from power banks. When these incidents happen in the air, you don't just pull over. You've got a full cabin, limited firefighting tools, and no quick way out. Realistically, you just have to deal with the smoke in the cabin, which is unfortunate. And it's not just a U.S. problem. Let's look at a few examples. On May 31st, a China Southern Airlines flight from Hangzhou to Shenzhen had to return to the airport after a power bank and a camera battery started smoking in an overhead bin. The crew used a fire extinguisher and thankfully nobody was injured. Yes, I know. I butchered those names. Buckle up. It's probably not going to get any better. On July 8th, a Delta flight from Fort Myers had to make an emergency landing. <laughs> Wait a second. Either he just got pulled away from one fantastic lunch, or he's thinking about these two guys falling behind him. Anyways, the power bank caught on fire, smoke filled the cabin, and the crew was able to put it out with a fire extinguisher. Unfortunately, there were two people injured in this incident. Remember, when the crews on the aircraft are putting out that fire from the lithium-ion battery, they're not actually extinguishing the battery fire itself. That's because the battery fire, it, it only lasts for a very short amount of time. It depends on the size of the battery, but essentially, they're knocking down the fire from the clothing, the foams, the plastics, basically everything around that battery that caught on fire because of the battery failure. If you want to learn more about these hazards, and you work with lithium-ion batteries, which Basically, let's face it, everybody does at this point. Have your company reach out. I train far more than just firefighters. I provide training and consulting for anyone who works with lithium-ion batteries on a daily basis. Electricians, plumbers, HVAC techs, general contractors, you name it. I travel nationally and internationally to make sure my customers have the knowledge and tools they need to stay safe. Two weeks later, on July 20th, a Virgin Australia flight leaving Hobart had to turn around minutes after departure. That's because a power bank caught fire in an overhead bin. The crew poured bottles of water on it to put it out. On July 24th, a Bangkok Airlines flight from Samweed to Bangkok experienced a mid-air fire caused by a power bank. Smoke filled the cabin, the crew used extinguishers, and they isolated the device before landing at a different airport. On August 8th, a KLM Boeing 777-300 flying from Sao Paulo to Amsterdam was about four hours from landing when a passenger's power bank overheated and began smoking over the Atlantic. In this case, you have limited opportunities for diversion. You're so far from land. The cabin crew moved quickly. They secured the device. They followed their procedures for lithium-ion battery incidents. The flight did continue safely to Amsterdam and landed without issue. And what surprised me is that none of the incidents that I just listed are included in the FAA's database right now. They'll probably get in there eventually. So earlier when I said there were 15 Bauer Bank incidents, with a little research, I'm now tracking 20. And realistically, there are probably even more events out there. It's not just in-flight incidents we need to be watching. There's also been a surge of power bank recalls over the last few years. Manufacturers are pulling products from the market for issues like overheating, swelling, and they even catch on fire during normal use. And a lot of these recall devices are still out there. They're tucked in backpacks or plugged in at somebody's desk. Some are cheap knockoffs with no real safety features, while others are name brand products that simply failed. The problem is, once somebody buys a power bank, it changes hands, it gets recalled, it gets tossed in a drawer for years, it's almost impossible to track. So when these devices make it onto an airplane, the risk isn't just theoretical, it's built in. All these cases and the ones on the FAA list, they show the same pattern. A small device fails, it overheats, and quickly turns into a cabin-wide problem. And the overhead bin is one of the worst places for this to happen. The smoke and flames are up high, they're contained, they're right above people's heads, and it takes time for the crew to get to it. In the U.S., the FAA and the TSA have clear baseline rules for traveling with lithium-ion batteries, and that includes power banks. Spare batteries aren't allowed in checked baggage, and they must be in your carry-on. Most consumer power banks are under 100 watt-hours, which can be carried without restriction, but if you're between 101 and 160 watt-hours, you can bring up to two, but you need airline approval. 
Anything above 160 watt hours is not allowed on passenger aircraft. The problem is the TSA isn't actually checking watt hour ratings in security. I would argue most agents really don't even know what they're looking for. That means, unfortunately, it's really on the honor system. If a passenger brings an oversized or damaged power bank through security, odds are it's going to make it onto the plane. And even worse, I've actually seen people using swollen power banks. It's something that should be a red flag, but most of the time it goes completely unchecked. That's why airlines are starting to change the rules. In May of 2025, Southwest Airlines updated their policy. And actually, I booked a Southwest flight earlier this year. I got a big alert on my phone before I could even check into my flight. You can still use power banks and charge your devices, but only if it's visible in plain sight. That means it has to be on your tray table or in the seat back pocket. You can't charge something while the battery is buried in a bag or stuffed in an overhead bin. Other airlines are even going further. Virgin Australia now advises passengers not to use power banks during flight. Singapore Airlines, Thai Airways, EVA Air, and China Airlines have outright banned the use of power banks in flight. Korean Air and Air Busan doesn't allow them in overhead bins at all. And that's because of the January incident where a power bank led to seven injuries during an evacuation. And it was a pretty large fire. They lost the entire plane. I did a video on that earlier this year. So the question is, should power banks be banned altogether? If you fly with a power bank, here's how to do it safely. Carry it on, never check it. Should be obvious. Verify the watt hour rating. It has to be under 100 watt hours. Above that, you may need airline approval, but is that really worth the hassle? When charging, keep it visible. Don't stack stuff on top of it. If it gets warm, unplug it immediately. And one last thing I want to cover. Let's talk about evacuation behavior. Go out! Go forward! In at least two recent flight evacuations, passengers were pulling their bags from the overhead bin while smoke was filling the cabin. Now, the incidents I'm talking about weren't necessarily related to lithium-ion batteries, but this is selfish and dangerous behavior. If there's an evacuation, leave your luggage. Every second counts, and the aisleways need to stay clear. I mean, look at this video. We're not talking just backpacks. We're talking luggage, carry-on bags. I do see all sorts of excuses out there trying to justify this behavior. Passports, medication, but realistically, all that stuff can be replaced, and you don't need any of it if you don't make it off the plane. You don't want to be the reason people get trapped behind you. Personally, at a minimum, I think the people behaving this way should get an FAA fine for not following crew instructions. Realistically, they should be charged with reckless endangerment. Lithium-ion batteries, they're not going away. They're in almost everything we carry. Think about how many lithium-ion batteries are in the objects on your person when you take a flight. But when you're in the air, how you pack them, how you store them, and how you use them, it matters more than most people realize. So be smart, know the rules, and don't be the reason why your flight makes the news.